My name is Lauren Scott. I'm from the CAE Program Management Office and would like to welcome you to our December CAE Tech Talk. Our first presentation for today is Michael Harpin from the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, um, Cyber Defense Education and Training Organization. And he will be discussing the President's Cup Cybersecurity Competition, building a competition across the federal workforce. So that will be our first presentation. Our next presentation will be Dr. Anupam Joshi from University of Maryland, Baltimore County. And they will be discussing AI for cybersecurity and cybersecurity for AI. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Michael. And if you have any questions, please feel free to post your questions in the chat and Michael will answer them throughout and at the end of the presentation. So Michael, I'll turn it over to you. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and you Great. can go ahead and share yours. All right, thanks so much. I'm very excited about this conversation. Um, sorry, don't let me multitask or else I'll uh, totally lose my train of thought. Um, it's really great to talk to this, this organization. I'm Michael Harpin, I'm the current federal lead uh, for the President's Cup Cybersecurity Competition at CISA. Um, I've, I've been learning a lot, drinking through the fire hose uh, about the competition space over the last year since I took over this project. And uh, so I'm excited to talk to this group because we know that, uh, you know, while we're really excited with everything we do with the President's Cup, uh, we also know that uh, the uh, universities and academics play a big uh, part in the competition space and cybersecurity competitions uh, pushing the envelope. Um, not to spoil too much of, of what I was going to talk about later, but the, the interns that we get coming into um, CISA that I know and I've worked with uh, are all doing competitions now uh, in school. And one of the interns we had last year, I made it to the finals in CCDC. Uh, and uh, those, and I had two interns uh, very highly involved with com competitions coming into their, uh, coming into working with us and they do them at school and they developed a challenge uh, using the same platform we have with the President's Cup. Uh, that was the project it was really just proof, uh, proof of proof that they could do it. But it was actually so great that we we incorporated it into the round, our first round of the competition. Uh, so really, just saying that that uh, I'm excited to to talk to this group uh, because we know universities play such a big role in the cybersecurity competition space. Um, so today I was going to give some background about the competition and what President's Cup is. Um, talk about how it's grown, considerations that were put in, put into it as we we started. Uh, and then um, give them some wrap up on the, the, the competitions we've held. We just finished last week, we just finished our third annual competition. Uh, and then I can show some of uh, the platform that we use for the competition. Uh, I'll show a video of one of our challenges uh, and give some, give some outlook on the, on the competition and what we, we hope to do. So the President's Cup uh, was stood up in spring of 2019 in response to Executive Order 13870, America's Cybersecurity Workforce. It mandated that DHS hold the competition annually uh, and DHS gave that responsibility to CISA. The competition is open only to federal workforce. So that's a question we get a lot. Uh, when is it gonna be opened up to contractors or national labs? Uh, right now, it's strictly the federal workforce. Um, so any executive department or agency employee or uniformed service members uh, can, can join the competition. Um, we'd love to, and I'll talk about it later, uh, we hope to expand the, the field that we can offer the competition to, but right now, just federal workforce. The competition has individuals and team competitions. Uh, the teams can be made up of up to five members. Uh, we actually had a team make the finals this year with only four. Uh, that was a first. They were uh, all came from the Marine Corps. Uh, so like all Marines, they make it a little bit more difficult for themselves, but uh, still excelled, which is, which is quite an accomplishment. Um, for the teams, you have to be from the same department. Uh, so um, 
there can be a team of DHS employees uh, and a team of FBI employees, but not a, not a team of DHS and FBI employees, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, this is the only competition that's held across the federal workforce. There are competitions that each agency um, or with each branch of the military has uh, for their own employees, but this is the only one that goes across the federal government. And uh, last year, excuse, excuse me, for 2021, uh, we had 20 different departments participate, which was the most we've ever had. So very exciting. Uh, here I have a little graphic showing where our 2021 uh, winners came from. The individual's competition is broken up into two tracks, and I'll talk about that later, and uh, our team competition. So as you can see, uh, it was all swept by DOD, uh, the Marine Corps, the Air Force, and the Army. Uh, actually, all of our first, second, and third from both individual tracks and for our teams uh, were all uh, DOD, all military. So a uh, clean sweep across the board. Um, okay. The competition has three rounds. Um, I should have included a, a graphic with our schedule, but I can show the website later. The, um, there's two qualifying rounds and a finals. Uh, the qualifying rounds are open for a week. And then when a, uh, when a participant joins or a team joins and starts a competition, they have a, a set timer to complete their round. And, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but we wanna give as much flexibility as we can to all the participants uh, to, to, to compete and, and take part of each round. Uh, we don't wanna restrict um, the registration or people joining uh, just based on time. And we also know some people have more time than others. I have three kids. Uh, so uh, I would have, definitely have to wait till the weekend or at night to, to do the competition. Uh, and so we try, we try and make that amenable to, to all of our participants. Uh, in the first round of the competition, it's open to all federal employees. Uh, so anybody can join this year. We had over 1,400 individuals register, and we had over 315 teams, which is the most we've had. Uh, and obviously, we're hoping to grow that more and more with each competition. Um, to make it into the second round, we take the best team from each department. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the DOD dominates our competition. So we, we take the top score from each just to get some diversity in our round two, uh, or else it might be all DOD with a few CISA uh, teams sprinkled in. Once we take each uh, the, the best score from each department, we take the top 20% of the remaining. And for individuals, it's just the top 100 scores from round one make it to round two. And then for our finals, we take the top five teams uh, to make it into the finals. And we take the um, top 10 individuals from each track. Um, this is probably a good time to talk about the individual tracks. So our track A, um, well, I should say, each, each of our, the executive order mandated that our uh, competition be tied to the NICE framework. So we take effort that each of our comp the challenges that you'll see later are tied to a NICE work role and uh, tasks from the NICE framework. Uh, and we decided in 2020 to separate our individual competition. So track A focuses on uh, cyber incident response and forensic work roles from the framework and track B focusing on exploitation uh, bone assessment uh, work roles. So offensive and defensive minded, we don't call those out specifically, uh, but that's what track A and track B are more focused on respectively. And then for our team's competition, we take work roles from across the NICE framework to, to build a, ro a robust, well-rounded team. We don't want just forensics uh, or just exploitation teams. We want them to have a skill set uh, throughout the framework. Uh, the final rounds of our teams are uh, is is over it's over two days, so the first round is is very similar to the qualifying rounds. Uh, I'll show you a game board later um, how that looks. It's a it's a static image and with uh, the challenges they can choose from, and then in our final round, the second day, uh, we put it up on the live stream, and uh, we try and create a, a different story or different environment for for them to take part in. Uh, we, we did that last Thursday, which was, gosh, I planned for it for so long, I've forgotten the date. It was December 9th. 
uh, and uh, that's available uh, now on YouTube. And I'll, I'll, I'll show a link for that uh, later in the presentation. So when the competition was stood up, um, one of our biggest uh, priorities and requirements was that it could be accessible with minimum hardware software requirements. We wanted as many individuals from the federal workforce to participate as, we could, as, as they could. Uh, and we knew many individuals would be using their government first laptops in the first round, which, which we do see. Uh, in the finals, you know, a lot of these guys have their own setups uh, to take part, but we, knew, we wanna make it uh, accessible to everybody. Um, and so uh, it's available just from a standard web browser. We also wanted it scalable uh, to support uh, many of concurrent participants uh, in, in the competition. So to do that, and I probably should have said this at the start, uh, we, we team with the Software Engineering Institute at Carnegie Mellon. They've been the support for the competition uh, since we, we stood up the competition in 2019, so three years running. And uh, we took uh, some applications in, in a lab manager that they had built called Topo Mojo uh, and built two applications for the President's Cup, Game Board and Identity. Uh, these are open sourced, uh, so you can see the links here uh, for all those applications. Topo Mojo is a, is a lab manager that allows for quick de deployments of small virtual environments. Um, uh, and then the, the game board and the identity server were, were built just for the President's Cup. Um, Topo Mojo has VM templates as well that uh, allows the developers um, uh, to to start with a, a template as that, you know, a set idea, a foundational approach to building out the challenges. Um, Game Board is the application that manages the scoring and then it's, it runs the competition on top of Topo Mojo and identity is, is to manage our authentication. Uh, the President's Cup is unique so that our, we have the hosted challenges and the challenges are deployed within dynamic virtual machines. Uh, the, the platform for the virtual machines, the Topo Mojo, it runs entirely in the cloud on VMware hypervisors. So we are tied to VMware. Um, we understand that's a restriction for more widespread use of our applications. Uh, and we're hoping for development in the future to, to get away from VMware, um, uh, again, to allow for, for widespread use. Uh, sorry, looking at my notes. Um, and we'll talk about here in, this, in the, the challenge development, a few other trade-offs we made <clears throat> with that approach. So as I've mentioned, uh, each challenge is tied to a nice work role. Here you can see on the right, just a, a screenshot of some of our challenges. Uh, and we, we point out which the work role is and what the tasks are associated with that so that the competitors have an idea of what they're stepping into uh, with their uh, before they load up a challenge. Uh, the challenges are built within Topo Mojo, like I said already, and that's what our interns use when they built the project this summer. And for each challenge, we had multiple variants um, to, to withstand the, the integrity of the competition and reduce answer sharing among participants. We also have uh, infinity challenges. And Topo Mojo is incapable of uh, randomizing the tokens that they need to find within the competition. Should have said this before earlier too, that our format for the competition is capture the flag, which I'm sure many of you are, are familiar with. Um, after we develop each challenge, we, they go through an extensive quality assurance and play testing. To do that, we have a great partnership with uh, Department of Energy, and that was also called out in the executive order. Uh, the Department of Energy um, works with Argonne National Labs and PNNL, Pacific Northwest National Lab, I think I got that. Uh, and uh, each of our challenges goes through quality assurance with those national labs. Uh, and that helps us make sure we're building fair challenges. Uh, also challenging enough, pun not intended, that uh, they're gonna meet the top cybersecurity uh, talent. Uh, and also it allows us to assign points. A big uh, part of our competition is the session timer. So I mentioned that the uh, rounds are open for a week, our qualifying rounds. Uh, within that week, the competitors have to load up their, their game board. And for individuals, they get four hours 
And for teams, they get eight. And it's a continuous timer that doesn't stop. There's no pausing. Uh, and one uh, value of the hosted challenges, and I'll show you in a little bit of uh, loading up one of our challenges, um, takes about 15, 20 seconds. And there's no hard, there's no, excuse me, there's no software to be downloaded for each challenge. Uh, so, you know, we're, they're not spending more time within their four hour uh, time cycle. So in 2019, we had our first competition. Um, we had two tracks then, just the teams and the individuals. Uh, we used the, the Jeopardy style game board, which I'm sure plenty of people are familiar with. Um, and we had a 3D immersive escape room that was used within our finals, uh, very exciting. So big success between uh, the executive order and starting our competition, uh, there was about, there was about three months. Uh, and then, uh, so being able to pull that off while also holding the finals uh, was, was a big success that we were happy with uh, and, and our competitors were as well. In 2020, we had a lot of great feedback from our competitors. Um, I'll say that uh, a lot of improvements we've made in the competition has come from direct feedback that we get from our participants. Uh, they put a lot of time and effort into this. They care deeply about it. So it's really exciting and, and really helpful to get that feedback from them. So one improvement we made uh, going into 2020 was multi-part uh, challenges that have partial credit. Uh, so it was all or nothing within our first year, uh, and now we have partial credit, and you'll see an example of that later. Um, in 2020 was when we split up the, the individual competition, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, and then in our finals, uh, like, like everything else in that year, we, it was held remotely. So that took some additional uh, development as well. Uh, we hosted a Unity client with all within the cloud uh, to, to host our Save the World uh, save the city type of game. Uh, and if you watch our 2020 live stream, which is still available on YouTube, you can see some examples of that. Uh, that remote, it took a lot of development and work, like I said, for that remote finals, but there were a lot of positives that came out of it. Our competitors would log into their challenges uh, through Parsec. So that allowed us to remotely monitor their, their uh, their challenge and their, their, them completing the, the, comp, the challenges. But at the same time, it let us show what they were working on in our broadcast and in our live stream. So uh, very exciting type of, you know, the content that we could provide out to the audience. In 2021, so we just wrapped up our, our finals uh, for 2021. We continue to use the nice work roles. Uh, we updated our game board for a better experience with our competitors, and I'll, I'll talk about that. Uh, and we had our, our finals on Thursday. Uh, we created a narrative situation uh, with our competitors saving the planet from aliens that wanted to take over our oranges. Uh, we built a lighthearted scenario for them, but still based it uh, within real world, real world cybersecurity issues uh, and made sure the, the competition was challenging enough for them. Um, they all enjoyed it. It, you know, I think it was a big success among our competitors. Uh, I've heard some feedback from the audience as well that enjoyed it. Uh, and you can see here, uh, you know, some of our fake newscasts here about the Aurelian aliens and uh, Earth being saved by the team. Um, so in this year, we, we updated the game board, we meaning uh, SEI. Uh, and the game board consolidated all the game boards into a single application. So I'm going to open up our website here in just a second. Uh, but uh, all the competitions are there within one application and the, the competitors only have one place to go. We integrated all of our challenge metadata uh, in, into the game board. So uh, you'll see a, uh, in the video we show later the grading server uh, used within the challenge, which is very exciting as opposed to just finding the tokens within the virtual environment, um, we, we can have the competitors write firewall rules or harden the network correctly. And then the grading server tests out their implementation uh, and gives them the token if they're correct. And you'll see an example of that in the video. Uh, also for 
PII protections, we migrated the email function, uh, functionality away into our identity server uh, just, just to harden that uh, for our competitors. So from that, we'll do this part live. So pardon me if there is any hiccups as we try to do this. So here's our president's cup that says it of site. Um, it's our landing page that our competitors have always used. And from here, we'll go to our practice board. Uh, our practice board was built just for the competitors to test out their, their, their uh, connection uh, and, and to give them some experience of what it's gonna be like in the game. So uh, there aren't too many surprises. You know, we understand there always is, and, and plenty of people had questions on timers and things like that, and uh, how they work during the competition. All right. Okay. So uh, when you enroll, you have a, a, a chance to update your, your username, your display name. Uh, there's a random name that's given to you. Uh, we have this. So if this is something we, we learned on the fly, um, we added these boxes in here to show uh, you know, how much time you're gonna get uh, for the practice board. You only get 60 minutes. I'll hit start session. This is another part. We added the final validation that people understand they're going to be starting their round. Uh, and that the clock will, their session and clock uh, timer will, will start. And then once in the game board, this is just a static image. Uh, and then with each challenge that we have within the practice board here available to you, it shows you the work role um, with a link to the, the next website and the task. Here's that timer I mentioned earlier um, for the, the challenge to get stood up. Again, because it's the session's time, you're set by 60 minutes session timer or four hours if I was an individual uh, during the competition, it's already started. So we try to give this, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, try to give that, you know, try and get that out as quickly as possible. Once you load it up, you'll get some additional background. So there's a, a, a mission critical website. Um, you need to find out which port it's on uh, and then download the token from token file. You have a Cali workstation and here's how you'll submit your questions. I won't be doing this live in front of you, but I just wanted to show you how it all is set up and worked. And this is all hosted currently at SEI's data center uh, in, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, we hope to transfer all of this into a cloud environment. It's one of our big priorities for the next year uh, within a DHS cloud. So now I'm gonna stop sharing. Shut that down. So I'm not taking up space. And so now I wanna show you, um, during our live stream uh, this year, we and last year, we had challenge walkthrough videos um, throughout the broadcast. And I'm gonna show you one here. This is also available on our, our live stream link uh, on YouTube. And I'll, I'll show the, the CISA.gov uh, site uh, where you can find that. And uh, the one narrating this is our intern, uh, an SFS intern we had over the summer and continuing to work with us in the fall. Share sound. I guess I'll hit optimize for video clip and uh, we'll do this live and see how it goes. Hello, everybody. Just want to make sure is that working? The sound working? I guess it wave me I down. Can hear it. Okay, thanks. Buddy, my name is Connor Bushnell and I'm a scholarship for service intern supporting the President's Cup cybersecurity competition. 
Today, I'm going to give you a walkthrough of the Track A Round 1 Challenge, What a Wonderful Day. This challenge involves skills pertaining to the Cyber Defense Incident Responder and Cyber Defense Forensics Analyst roles of the NICE framework. Let's go ahead and get started. Here we can see the challenge scenario. Our company has been hacked and ransomware has encrypted our files. Our job is to respond to this incident and get them back. Several important bits of information are provided in this description, such as the attackers being known to use PowerShell and where our company stores its backups. We also get some information about how the challenge will be scored. In this case, some questions will make use of the challenge server to test our adjustments, while others will involve directly finding the keys on the system. I think it's pause, Michael. Sorry. Now that we know what to do, let's go ahead and launch our VM and get started on the challenge. Our first task will be to disable the ransomware. To do this, let's go ahead and open up Process Explorer. This program allows us to see every process running on our machine. Immediately, as the instructions stated, one particular process stands out for using PowerShell. We create a memory dump of the process for use in a future question. It is also apparent that the malware is being run through the use of OpenSSH. To prevent it from starting up again once we kill the process, we disable the OpenSSH service. Now we can force kill the malicious process and it won't be able to start itself back up again. To ensure that attackers can no longer access our machine, we're going to create a firewall rule that prevents the use of SSH. This rule will prevent any attempts to connect to port 22, which was previously hosting the OpenSSH server. Now that the ransomware is disabled, we can restore our files from backup. As we can see here, the malware encrypted the files with an unknown password. Thankfully, because the directions provided us with the backup location, restoring the original files can be easily done through the Windows Backup Utility. Now all of the original information is restored. This challenge makes use of the challenge server functionality, and by navigating to it using a web browser, we can initiate the grading process. In our case, it will check whether the ransomware is still running and whether the files have been restored. As we can see here, we have successfully passed the grading checks and have been granted the tokens. These will be pasted into the corresponding questions on the competition site for credit. Now we can move on to our final two tasks. The next question requires us to find the encryption password the ransomware used to encrypt our files. To do this, we will need to analyze the memory dump we created using Process Explorer. Typing the PEB command allows us to analyze the process's process environment block, which stores a program's environment variables. In this case, the malware used these variables to store the password, which we now have access to. Now that we have the answer to the third question, let's move on to the fourth and final question. This task requires us to find the user the attackers had created to use as a backdoor into our system. To accomplish this, we will use PowerShell to display a list of local users. 
Whichever one was created most recently is the culprit. Lyle is the highest unique identifier and was therefore created the most recently. We've identified our malicious user. Lyle is the answer to our final question. By entering the submission tokens awarded to us by the grader, the password the malware used to encrypt the files, and the malicious local account name into their associated question prompts, we are awarded full points. Challenge complete. All right. Sorry about that in the start. Okay. All right, are we good on uh, slides right now? Uh, you should be seeing the slides, so shout at me if, uh, if I'm not doing that. We see them. Okay, great. Uh, so in our outlook for, for the President's Cup, um, we want to expand the use of, of our President's Cup challenges. Um, we're building this library of, of challenges that we want to be able to use. Uh, we had uh, an archive site, we called it, where we uh, other where the federal workforce could play our competitions, excuse me, challenges from our previous competitions. Uh, as you can see here, it's grayed out. Uh, some contractual issues, I'll just put it that lightly, that we're, we're trying to figure out to be able to get our cloud environment back up. Um, we also want to be able to hold other competitions uh, within the federal workforce is our main focus here at the start. Um, the competition, the President's Cup, what we've heard, you know, there, there are some very impressive individuals who take part and win the competition or even finish, uh, make it to the finals. Even some individuals I know uh, who did not qualify for the finals are some of the smartest cybersecurity people I know. So uh, we, we, we want as many people to participate and join as, as they can at the start uh, just to see what it's like and use it as a training opportunity. Uh, but how can we how can we make competitions for uh, the you know not the top talent you know more in the middle or people who are trying to reskill those are ideas that we want to we're, we're exploring and looking to build upon for the President's Cup. Uh, we want to um, again make the the challenge archive available. We have released the source code for our 2019 challenges. Uh, those are available. Uh, on our GitHub site, and uh, I can try and post the link in the chat after after I'm done or taking questions. Hey, uh, Mike. That's on, excuse me. Michael, this is Dan Manson. Um, quick comment and question: uh, What you're doing in terms of mapping to the framework is is really really good. Your videos are very high quality. I'm on a a grant to map competitions to the Nice framework. I'm really excited about following up with you, but you're. I believe that you could take this down to lower levels too. If, if you can have a competition that maps to the framework down to high school and middle school, it'd be beautiful. Yeah, that's, and, and we're trying to explore that. It, we we want to hold it to the executive order uh, and that asks us to identify and recognize the top cybersecurity talent within the federal workforce. So that's our top priority uh, and what we continue to focus on. And so we want to find ways of how we can make that material available to the work, federal workforce and public first. Uh, and then additional development of, uh, of other challenges. And I'll talk a little bit about that more with the appliance we released. Uh, you know, how can we do that? It's growing the development, the challenge developer field. Um, and I think that costs money. I mean, to, to, not, to, to not beat around the bush. Uh, and, uh, you know, where can we get that or what can we do with the government to build partnerships uh, who, who can use our platform to, to build challenges? You know, those are all conversations we're having. I appreciate that. Yes, we, we understand this could be targeted to younger, more early stages of cybersecurity practitioners. Um, we just need to find the resources and, and build uh, the project that, that, that can do that. Right. But what you have in that video is game film. And the more you incorporate the nice work roles and tasks into the game film, the better. Yep. Thank you. Uh, 
Um, so sorry, what I what I mentioned was in 2019 we released the uh, the the open source for those challenges, which includes the walkthroughs. We have the walkthrough videos for our 2019 challenges available as well. Again, not to beat around the bush, just some contractual issues that when we're trying to address uh, releasing our 2021 challenges uh, first um, to the public uh, and, and with walkthrough videos and then our 2020 challenges as well. Uh, so hoping to, to get that accomplished. At Black Hat this year, we announced our Foundry appliance, uh, which is what I spoke to earlier. That was a pre-configured VM that packages all of our President's Cup uh, applications. Uh, and to and it's it's uh, uh, uses a Kubernetes cl cluster. Um, could be a follow-on conversation uh, with our SEI partners uh, to have with this this group. Uh, they the the knowledge of containers and virtualization uh, gets a little bit beyond me, but. Um, uh, you know, I think it's it's a, it's an important topic for for this appliance that we want to spread the use on. Um, with this, we're hoping we can we can build out our challenge developer pool. Uh, like I said earlier, we're going to begin exploring uh, with our with our national lab partners. Um, and like I mentioned, with the interns using this over the summer, uh, they were the first non SEI. Uh, individuals to develop a challenge for the competition. So we have that proof of concept. Uh, we know it can be done. Uh, so now we're, we're looking towards the future of spreading the pool for the competition uh, of developers just for diversity and we, we don't repeat ourselves. But then again, how can we use our platform, develop challenges for outside the competition? And we're really excited that this appliance is going to let us do that. <clears throat> Now, before, excuse me. And before I start taking more questions, I just wanted to share. Uh, our sysa.gov slash president's cup site. Um, we have our, you know, we're showing our winners. Hopefully we can put in a better graphic in there for that. We have a link here for our live stream. You know, or you can see our great graphics that, that have been put together by our CISA team. Uh, again, just really just a, a cool feel, a unique brand for the competition that we're excited about. This is a, a, uh, a character they had made for other CISA projects called the Yuki, uh, a, a, some kind of mix between a Yeti and a, a Wookiee. And so we, we thought that was pretty fun and, and ran with it throughout this year's competition. So if you go to CISA.gov slash President's Cup, you can watch the live stream. You can see some information on our previous competitions. Uh, and this will be where we announced the, the 2022 competition. So that is it. Uh, I will check the chat window or, or take any additional questions. And I appreciate the, the, the previous comment. All right, thank you so much, Michael. You do have a question in the chat if you wanted to. Uh, was there any specific reasons as to why you decided to use Kelly? Yeah, well, and, and this is speaking to, I think to understand your question, uh, we wanted it all to be within the, the browser uh, in all hosted challenges so that the Kali uh, machine stands up uh, within your web browser. That's accessibility. Um, that was our the first part of our um, uh, thought process when building out the competition. Uh, we also uh, went with that approach for integrity reasons uh, as well, more fairness more than, than uh, um, people uh, cheating or anything like that. We, we just want uh, we don't have a repository of tools. We want to make everyone have access to the same uh, window machine and, and uh, for each challenge. Uh, we do have windows machines in some of our challenges as well. Uh, and so we, we, that was just one of the reasons, you know, it's another reason why we decided to host the challenges uh, and stand them up within a web browser. Um, I will say uh, we get a lot of feedback from our, our finalists uh, about that and that choice. Um, 
They want to use their own tools that they've developed or they are familiar with. Uh, they want us to, we, the, our, our uh, virtual machines within our finals and our competition are not connected to the internet uh, and or limited connectivity, you know, as part of a challenge. So, um, you know, that is feedback we get. We're exploring ways that we might be able to address some of their concerns. A central repository of tools that everyone has access to um, uh, and ideas like that, but uh, we, we do get that feedback from our competitors as well. I think Kyle uh, had a follow-up question. Yeah, we currently dockering machines. So we, we use that, um, So with each challenge, the, the virtual machines are, are being built separately for, for, for the challenge as it's launched. Uh, we have to keep in mind of that during the competition, especially our team's competition, because we'll reach our bandwidth limits. Uh, and so we, we, we have a cap on that that we got, we got close to approaching this year, uh, which is good and bad good because we have the registration and, and the people participating, um, but bad because uh, we want to be able to meet that scale. Um, so the each so for each challenge, the virtual machine is created uh, um, within that Docker environment. Uh, they are not standing machines that people are remoting into. If, if that's what you're asking, yep, no problem. Okay, maybe just give it a couple more seconds to. See if we have any additional questions to come through. Again, if you have yeah, any questions, feel free absolutely. to unmute yourself or type your questions in the chat. If I could, I will share, because I mentioned this and probably should have had this in the slides. Um, there you go, the GitHub link. Uh, this is our uh, 2019 challenges. So we are hoping to, again, on the CISAGOV uh, GitHub space, put out our 2020 uh, and 2021 uh, challenges as well. Um, I will say, you know, feel free to, to reach out to me. Uh, it's, I'll put my email address in here. Uh, happy to carry on the conversation. Um, like I said, we know competition space right now is uh, there's a lot of uh, input from the university and academic side. So, um, you know, we, we're always looking for input and, and conversations uh, about what we can do with the President's Cup. Okay, I don't see any additional questions um, to come in. So Michael, thank you so much for presenting on um, your competition.